With me finally almost having this fully completed, I thought, you know what, now would be a great time to start discussing some of the techniques I'm using to actually assemble this particular mock. Because well, there's a lot of interesting techniques in this, and, you know, I've had a lot of people suggest that I'm doing illegal techniques and also using a lot of glue, of which both, in my opinion, are wrong. But that does depend on your definition of an illegal technique. The majority of this building is quite simply just using a ton, and I mean a ton, of snot bricks. Just to show you what I mean, any part of this building that I want to, I can just come over here and start picking stuff off. And again, it's because the entire exterior structure and design of this is simply just using a ton of snot bricks. But I think the part that puzzles people the most is how I'm able to show the underside of plates and such, like you see in various locations throughout the building, like I'm holding in my hand here. Now, this some people may consider to be an illegal technique. And all I'm simply doing is I am using Technic bricks. And with the Technic brick, you have the hole, which is the perfect size of a Lego stud. And you can place a plate, or in this case, this is a jumper plate, and this is also a plate on the back side of it. And then that gives you some really unique textures by using the underside of the brick for those looks. And that's what was giving me the ability to do the really interesting greebling that you see on the side of the building here. And now because we're inside the building, I just want to quickly show you kind of how it looks. I know I've made a video previously, and I'll try and link it over here, but... You can see it's kind of like a honeycomb pattern inside of this. And the reasoning for that is to give the exterior wall structure. Now, I fully intend on building these all the way to the full height of the inside. But for right now, my main focus has been trying to just finish the exterior. So I do intend on coming back at a later date and getting all this built up and filled in and then putting some type of detail on the inside of this in various locations. But... Since again, since we're up here, let's talk about the shape of this. This was the hardest thing to do, was to get this triangular shape of the building. And to get that shape, what it is, is I created this little panel here. And you can see by looking really closely at it, that how I'm able to get these two halves to come together to meet into a triangle is quite simply because I'm using a ton of wedge plates. And you can see that they're lined up all along the edge there. Now, I do have a few small gaps in a few spots. But all in all, I thought this was the best way to do it. And because I have the plates meeting together in the middle, because you can see these are actually running on a diagonal, where these studs are running just perfectly north and south or east and west, whichever you want to call it. But in order for me to get the exterior walls, I wanted the, the, the funky angle to be on the interior. Because if I was to try and just build, let's say for example, if this was going to be the flat iron base, and I wanted to use this on the exterior, what you would end up having is you would have a wall that you cannot build on. Because this is not going to let you attach a bunch of studs. There are methods you can use to do it, but to me it wasn't worth the headache. And I wanted this to be really, really rigid. So that was why I came up with this little plate system. And the flat iron building has a very unique shape. So again, looking at this, you can see, I mean, it is basically a triangle, even though this is not a true triangle because the sides aren't equal. But um, to, this is the exact shape, though, of the actual flat iron building. And you can see here, this is an architectural drawing of what some of the floors may look like. And it mimics this exact shape. And I was trying to get as close as possible to that exact shape while I was building the building. And then you saw that I had the walls on the interior of that building. So let's kind of quickly discuss how I was able to connect the walls. To give you a better look, I wanted to bring down one of the floors to compare it to this particular section that I'm using. And again, to, let's look inside. And I call this kind of my honeycomb and honeycomb pattern because I've, I've done this quite simply just for strength. Because this is what keeps the exterior walls nice and locked together. 
But again, you can see that I have a wall coming over and then it comes over on a diagonal. And I know to a lot of people, it's like, wow, how the heck are you able to do that? Well, if we come over here and look at these, every so often, so right here, you can take a hinged brick, if I can get it to snap together, there we go, and you can snap that together to hold it. And it's every 12 studs, if I remember correctly, that I can do this. Let's see, there... And I am trying to do this on the fly, so bear with me. So right now we have those two. Let's come down again. And you can really, if you just look at the studs, you can see where it's going to line up. Like right here is it's going to be the next point of lining up. So let's pop that one on now. And by doing that, now these two pieces are held together. And again, once I've done that, what I do is I just run my bricks straight over to the walls so that way I can keep everything interconnected. Just to show you one more time, that is that honeycomb pattern that I'm doing in order to keep everything fully connected. The next big question a lot of people ask is how was I able to connect the corners? Because if you're just looking at the pattern that I have here, it's like there's no rhyme or reason for the way that the corners are made. And I made my own little corner piece. This corner piece is using round one by one bricks and also the one by two round plates. Now I'm stacking the round plates in a manner and fashion that they equal a brick in height. But this is what's given me the ability to have these flexible corners. And you can see that is what this cap is here for. And it serves two different purposes. Number one, I'm using this tubing. The tubing is the tubing that I sell on my website. And I use, you could also use Lego tubing. You could even use Lego bar pieces, just so you know. So this is not illegal. I'm just using an off-brand product. But there's a couple of different purposes for having this like this. Number one, it was it gives me any the ability to do any degree of angle I want with the plates. But the other big thing is it's strength, man. It this makes this so strong. And if you've been watching the build process on my uh, Instagram, a lot of people have always asked why they see this tubing. And this is exactly why. Because let me show you. I can take and pull on this, and that will not pull apart. It just, it won't come. Now, yes, in this place I can pull it a little bit, but it's still, it, it's generally going to stay together. I mean, it... This, you have no idea how much strength doing this actually gives you when doing your building. And it's also worth noting, if you're someone that's going to be doing the crazy size buildings like I do, and you're doing a funny angle anyway, you are going to want to do something like this. But there's something else to note. You can also buy 3 millimeter steel tubing. Well, it's not tubing, but it's steel rod. And if you wanted to do this and have a building that I don't care if you hit it with a hammer, it ain't going to come apart unless you hit it out in the middle area somewhere. But the corners will never fall apart. But if you buy this 3 millimeter uh, metal rod, you can do the exact same technique and just slide it through your corners also. But I do know that doing this, like I said, I know people would say is illegal or whatever, but... When you start building insanely huge builds, like I tend to enjoy building myself, you want to start looking at other ways to make them very structurally sound and make it to where they cannot fall apart on you. And you will be happy you did. Since we're talking about techniques, this was another technique that I used to show that you could make a building extremely strong. And this particular building for the unique shape is using nothing but railroad track. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will be making more technique videos coming soon.